will in, uh, do some more problems on uh, integral of tan x log uh, tan x sec x cot and cosec x. The first one is integral one upon let's say a sin x plus b cos x. You must remember that whenever you are given a sin x plus b cos x, this can be converted to this can be converted to root of a square plus b square into sine of x plus alpha. So I just first teach you how this conversion can be done. What you do is a sin x plus b cos x, you divide and multiply with root of a square plus b square. Then this became sin x I'm writing first, then I will write a with the root of a square plus b square plus cos x I will write second, b upon root of a square plus b square. By doing so, what happens is, these are the sides of a right angle triangle. For example, I want this to be sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. This I want to be cos. So if I take this angle as alpha, this is a, this is b, and root of a square plus b square becomes a hypotenuse. So I can say sin alpha, this is can be treated as cos alpha and this can be treated as sin alpha. So I can write this as root of a square plus b square into sin of sin a cos b plus cos a sin b is sin of a plus b. So sin x plus alpha where alpha is, you can see a tan alpha where tan alpha is b by a. So alpha can be dressed tan inverse b by a. So from the triangle tan alpha is b. Let's have a look at this problem. Integral 1 upon sin x plus cos x dx. So sin x plus cos x if you compare with a sin x plus b cos x we can write as root of a square plus b square into sin of x plus alpha. This is what you can write. Your a here is 1, b is 1. Therefore, I can write sin x plus cos x as root of a square plus b square become root of 1 square plus 1 square into sin of the angle is x plus alpha. What is alpha here? Alpha is tan inverse b by a. That became tan inverse of 1 by 1, which is pi by 4. So I can put pi by 4 here into dx. So with, this will become 1 over root 2 into cosec x plus pi by 4 into dx. So we can convert 1 upon a sin x plus b cosec into cosec. And the integral of cosec is log of tan x plus pi by 4 divided by 2 within the modulus plus c, which will become 1 by root 2 log of tan x by 2 plus pi by 8 plus c. This becomes your final answer. This is how we can convert integral of 1 upon sin x plus cos x. Okay. Problem is integral 1 upon sin x minus root 3 cos x. Here the middle sign is minus. So I can say a sin x minus b cos x is equal to root of a square plus b square into sin of x minus alpha. So the only difference is x minus alpha where alpha is tan inverse b by a. So we can apply this formula directly. So here a is 1 b is root 3. So root of a square plus b square is root of 1 plus 3 which is 2. So I can write like this. Integral 1 upon root 2 root of a square plus b square became root uh, sorry 2 2 into sine of x minus. Now what is tan inverse b by a? Tan inverse root 3 by 1 that is pi by 3. So I can write here minus pi by 3 into dx. 
So directly I can use this formula, replace root of a square plus b square, replace alpha's value as pi by 3. So I can write now 1 by 2 integral cosec x minus pi by 3 into dx. So final answer 1 by 2 log of tan x minus pi by 3 divided by 2 plus c which became 1 by 2 log of tan x by 2 minus pi by 6 plus c. That is my final answer. Next problem is integral 1 upon root of 1 plus sin x into dx which I can write as 1 upon root of cos x by 2 plus sin x by 2 the whole square. Now this problem will become similar to the same problem that we did before. That became 1 over cos x by 2 plus sin x by 2 into dx. Now using the same formula that we did before, uh, I will take sin x the first. Sin, let's say x plus cos x is root of a square plus b square into sine of x plus alpha. We will use the same method. Here a is 1, b is 1 and alpha is tan inverse b by a which is pi by 4. So I can write this as integral 1 over root of a square plus b square became root 2 into sine of x by 2 plus pi by 4. So the only difference is here going to be instead of x it is x by 2. I have taken sin x by 2 first, you can interchange the position, that's why sin x plus cos x can be written the same way. So this became integral 1 by root 2 outside the integral, 1 by 2 outside the, 1 by root 2 outside the integral, 1 by root 2, integral cosec x by 2 plus pi by 4 into dx. So your answer is 1 by root 2 log of tan x by 2 plus pi by 4 by 2 divided by the coefficient of x plus c. So you can divide by 2 coefficient of x is 1 by 2, so divide by 1 by 2. So this 2 and this root 2 can be cancelled, so it becomes root 2 log of tan x by 2 by 2 become x by 4 plus pi by 8 plus c becomes your final answer. This 2 comes to numerator, 2 upon root 2 is root 2. That's how we get this. I am going to add some more problems of the kind f dash x upon f of x dx is log of modulus fx. So we said last class, whenever denominator's derivative is numerator, the integral answer is log of denominator. So we shall use this for few questions where the manipulation is required. Let's say I have tan x plus 2 tan square x plus 1 dx. If you look at this problem like this, derivative of tan square x is not tan x. So in such situation, we need to manipulate the function. So every time mentally a sort of manipulation should be done and then you have to decide whether the denominator's derivative can it be numerator or not. If the denominator's derivative can be numerator, then only this method can be applied. So I will write this as sin x upon cos x divided by 2 sin square x upon cos square x plus 1. Let me take the LCM. So it became sin x upon cos x all divided by 2 sin square x plus cos square x divided by cos square x. So 1 cos x and the square will go away and you will end up in sin x into cos x divided by 2 sin square x plus cos square x. Let it be the way it is. Now think about the derivative of sin square x. If you differentiate 2 sin square x plus cos square x, and I don't want to change everything to sin, or if you want, you can change everything to sin also. 
square square one minus sin square, but it's not required. However, it is. It will continue that thing. When you differentiate this, this will become four sine x into derivative of sine x minus two cos x into derivative of cos x give you minus sine x. That's how that minus has come. So finally, it will end up in two sine x cos x. Four sine x cos x minus two sine x cos x, two sine x cos x. So the denominator's derivative is matching other than the constant. And whenever we are in sort of a constant, we have the option of dividing and multiplying. So I'm going to divide and multiply. One by two into two sine x cos x divided by two sine square x plus cos square x into dx. So my answer turns out to be. 1 by 2 log of modulus. Even if you don't put modulus, no problem, because sine square x and cos square x are positive numbers. Plus c. This becomes your final answer. This is how you can do. So manipulate the function such a way that the denominator's derivative comes to numerator. So now you may be thinking, how will we know that? Yes, mentally this operation has been done, and then you have to think, then decide which method to apply. It will take some practice to become that sort. Look and say. What kind of question is this? Okay, let's have a look at the exponential functions. Integral, let's say, two e raised to x upon three e raised to x plus five. Now, you can see the derivative of denominator is three e raised to x plus five is three e raised to x. But we have two here, so what I can do is. I can remove a two outside. Integral e raised to x upon three e raised to x plus five into dx. But I wanted a three, so divide by three and multiply by three. Now the denominator's derivative is numerator, so my answer became two by three into log of three e raised to x plus five plus. This becomes your answer. This is a method that we can adopt. Now let's look at. Integral one upon one plus sum three e raised to x dx. I want you to compare this two problem. You have noticed that there is no derivative available here. Whenever the derivative is not available, we always think of how to bring the derivative. What I do is I divide numerator and denominator by e raised to x. If I do that, this will become one upon e raised to x, one upon e raised to x. Plus three e raised to x upon e raised to x. So numerator and denominator can be divided always by same quantity. This became e raised to minus x, e raised to minus x plus three into dx. Now what have you noticed? The denominator's derivative has got a minus. What is the derivative of e raised to minus x? E raised to minus x into derivative of minus x. So we are short of a minus. So I can put a minus here and write my answer as. Minus log of e raised to minus x plus three plus c. I can swap my answer over here, or if you want, you can further simplify e raised to minus x is one upon e raised to x. Take LCM. All those processes can be done, but this is an integral part. We can complete it in this manner. This one, e raised to x plus e raised to minus x divided by e raised to x minus e raised to minus x dx. So what happens here? If you take the derivative of denominator, you can see exactly the numerator. So your answer is directly log of modulus e raised to x minus e raised to minus x plus c. So what will you do for this problem? Uh, let's say one uh, plus e raised to x upon one minus e raised to x. In fact, if you take e raised to minus x as one upon e raised to x, the same same format the function will come. So in this case, what I do is I will. There are two methods. One method is you can separate it. You can separate this one upon e raised to minus x, divide numerator and denominator by e raised to x. You can do that method which I taught you just before, or you can do a simple method. Take an e raised to x by two common. One is nothing but e raised to zero, that is e raised to x by two into e raised to minus x by two. If you add the powers, you'll get becomes zero. So this became e raised to minus x by two. When you open the bracket, powers are added. E raised to zero, it will become one. This of course e raised to x by two. When you multiply, powers will be added. X by two plus x by two will give you x. Same thing. Denominator will take a common. E raised to minus x by two minus e raised to x by two into dx. Now this both will get cancelled. 
Now think about the derivative of the denominator. What is derivative of e raised to x by 2 minus x by 2 minus e raised to x by 2? What will be its derivative? Its derivative will be e raised to minus x by 2 into minus 1 by 2 minus e raised to x by 2 into 1 by 2. So if I take a minus half common, it is e raised to minus x by 2 plus e raised to x by 2. And you can see exactly that is in the numerator. So only thing is, I do not have minus half here. So I have to divide and multiply with minus half. So minus 2 integral, minus half, e raised to minus x by 2 plus e raised to x by 2 divided by e raised to minus x by 2 minus e raised to minus x by 2 dx. Now the denominator is derivative is numerator. So my answer is minus 2 log of modulus e raised to minus x by 2. Here there is no minus sign. Minus e raised to x by 2 plus c becomes your final answer. This will be your answer. This also you can manipulate such a function. So if you look at this 1 upon e raised to x, 1 upon e take LCM. It comes into the same format. This can be converted to the same format. Only there will be a 2x there. And whenever we have such format, you can take e raised to x by 2 common and make the denominator's derivative as numerator. What is the other method? Other method is you can separate it. You can write it as 1 upon 1 minus e raised to x plus e raised to x upon 1 minus e raised to x. If you do this way, here we need to divide numerator and denominator by e raised to x. So you have to divide by e raised to x, you have to divide by e raised to x, you have to divide by e raised to x. So e raised to minus x upon e raised to minus x minus 1 dx. And this directly denominators derivative is numerator. So you can arrange this way. So the, we will put a minus sign so that the denominators derivative becomes numerator. And here also I require a minus sign minus e raised to x upon 1 minus e raised to x. Now denominators derivative is numerator minus log of e raised to minus x minus 1 minus log of 1 minus e raised to x. So we can manipulate it. Then you will ask me the question, are they same? Yes, they are same. If you apply loss property, they both can be made into the same format. So both are only written in different form, but both answers are equal. Now another problem, you will always notice that whenever there is a square root, we have to make a perfect square and remove the square root. Then only we can integrate. So what we do is, if you open this bracket and if you write 1 as sec square x plus tan, sec square x minus tan square x. So what I've done is 1 replaced by sec square x minus tan square x. And I'm going to open this bracket 2 tan x sec x and then 2 tan square x. All under the root. You will notice that this tan square x and 2 tan square x will get combined. So I can write this as sec square x plus 2 tan x sec x plus tan square x. So 2 tan square x minus tan square x became tan square x. Now a square 2ab b square. This is of the form a square plus 2ab plus b square. So I can rewrite this as root of sec x plus tan x the whole square. That's how whenever root is there, we can remove root only by making whatever inside the root as a perfect square. So this became sec x plus tan x dx. Actually there is a modulus, but we are just ignoring that because assuming that angles are in the first chord, right? Okay, then separate it. Separate both of them. Now both have integral. Integral of sec x log sec x plus tan x log sec x plus tan x integral of tan x log sec x plus c. Now if you want you can combine them log m plus log n and write your final answer. One more special problem integral 1 upon x plus x to the power any number n dx. So you can have like this, 1 upon x into 1 plus x cubed dx like this. Or you may have 1 upon x into 1 minus x cubed dx. So all of them will have the same method. When you open the bracket, you have x and x raised to any power. You can have even fractions, rational numbers, any number. But one should be x and other should be x raised to any number. Then in such case, what you need to do is, 
divide numerator and denominator by x to the power n. When you do that, the numerator became 1 upon x raised to n, denominator became x upon x raised to n plus x raised to n upon x raised to n. This will become x raised to minus n divided by x raised to 1 power will reduce. So I am going to write it as instead of actually it is x up 1 x raised to n. So x raised to 1 minus n which I can write as x raised to n minus 1. So I will write x raised to n minus 1 plus 1. Now let's think about the derivative of this. What is derivative of x to the power minus n minus 1 plus 1? My answer is minus n minus 1 x raised to minus n minus 1 minus 1. This is nothing but minus n minus 1 x raised to minus n. So I am in short of only an n minus 1. So I can write 1 upon minus I will put here minus n minus 1 into x raised to minus n divided by x raised to minus n minus 1 plus 1. Now you will notice that the denominator's derivative is numerator. So I can write the answer as minus 1 upon n minus 1 into log of modulus x raised to minus n minus 1 plus 1 plus c. You may write it as 1 upon n minus 1 with a negative sign become 1 minus n in the log of 1 over x raised to n minus 1 plus 1 plus c. Now if you feel like you can take LCM and simplify further according to the answer. But this is a technique to be applied. Whenever 1 have more degree, if you open the bracket x, x raised to 4. So it is like x and x raised to 4. In that case you need to divide numerator and denominator by x raised to 4. Let's have a look at a numerical 1. Let's do the same problem. Suppose I am calculating integral of 1 upon x plus x raised to 4 dx. That is when you open the bracket x plus x raised to 4 dx. So if when you divide by x raised to 4 in the numerator and denominator, this will become x raised to minus 4, this will become x raised to minus 3 and this will become 1. So when you divide 1 over x raised to 4, x raised to minus 4. x divided by x raised to minus 4, x raised to minus 3. That's why I wrote it as minus of n minus 1. Now just check the denominator's derivative. The denominator's derivative, derivative of x raised to minus 3 plus 1 is minus 3 x raised to minus 4. So we are in short of only a minus 3. So divide and multiply with minus 3. Now the denominator's derivative is numerator. So I can write my answer as minus 1 by 3 log of modulus x raised to minus 3 plus 1 plus c. Which I can write as minus 1 by 3 log of x raised to minus 3 is 1 by x cubed plus 1 plus c. Now if you feel you can take LCM and this became 1 plus x cubed upon x cubed plus c. So you can simplify further also. You can stop over there also. That's your wish. Have a look at this problem. If you differentiate denominator x to the power e plus e to the power x. It is like x to the power n. So e into e is a number x to the power e minus 1 and the derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x. Only. And if you take an e common, 1 power of x will be reduced. It look like this. And you can see that we are in short of only one e. Hence, I will divide and multiply with e and write it as x raised to e minus 1 plus e raised to x minus 1 divided by x raised to e plus e raised to x. When you open this bracket, e into x raised to e minus 1, which is a perfectly derivative of this. And when you open this bracket, e's power will become x and hence the denominator's derivative is numerator and hence the answer is 1 upon e log of modulus x raised to e plus e raised to x plus t. This becomes the final answer. Now we shall deal with a technique of integrating some particular function. The function I am going to deal with is integral a sin x 
plus b cos x divided by c sin x plus d cos x which a b c d are numbers like 2 3 4 like that number a b c d are numbers that means a combination of sin and cos and another type of problem a e raised to x plus b c e raised to x plus d both these problems have the same technique of integration so i am teaching both together what you need to do is you need to split the numerator into two parts first part is denominator second part is the derivative of denominator and we will balance this equation by putting some numbers let me put this as b and a which means numerator should be written as a number into denominator plus b into derivative of denominator that means a and b are the dummy numbers which will balance left hand side and right hand side let's have a look at one problem here integral 7 sin x plus 24 cos x divided by 3 cos x plus 4 sin x now what we are going to do here is we are going to split this numerator into two parts 7 sin x plus 24 cos x numerator is going to be split into two parts one part will be the denominator 3 cos x plus 4 sin x another part will be the derivative of denominator so what is the derivative of 3 cos x minus 3 sin x and other part will be plus 4 cos x now for the left hand side and right hand side to be equal I put two coefficients here a and B are two dummy numbers which will make the left hand side and right hand side balance it's for balancing the equation first of all how many sin x do you have the left hand side it is not 4 it is 4 times a 4 times a and minus 3 times b this many sin x I have on the right hand side and how many cos x do I have on the right hand side 3 times a and 4 times b So I can say now, the number of sin x on the left hand side and number of sin x on the right hand side should be equal. So 4a minus 3b should be equal to 7. Same way, 3a plus 4b should be equal to 24. So the number of cos x here is 24, number of cos x here is 3a plus 4b. Now let's solve this simultaneously. I will just do directly by using determinants, 28 plus 72 divided by 16 plus 9 25 that is 7 into 4 28 minus 24 into by grammar's rule i'm applying so that gives you 4 100 divided by 25 is 4 so when a is 4 is 16 16 7 minus 16 so b will be 3 so 4 3 side 12 3 4 side 12 16 minus 9 7 both are correct so now I can say A's value has got, B's value has got. So how can you write this integral as? Now this integral can be written in this manner. Okay, I'll write it over here. So now I'm going to rewrite this question. So my integral is equal to, instead of 7 sin x and 24 cos x, I can write now A, A is how much? 4. 4 times 3 cos x plus 4 sin x and b is 3 3 times minus 3 sin x plus 4 cos x is equal to 3 cos x plus 4 sin x into dx now if you open this bracket you will notice 12 plus 12 24 cos x 16 minus 9 7 sin x so it is balancing we have we have calculated a and b such a way that this numerator and this are equal that's what we have done over this step now i can just separate and integrate so when i separate this integral when i separate the integral let's have a look at what happens this 4 will come outside 3 cos x plus 4 sin x divided by 
थ्री कॉस सिक्स प्लस फोर साइन एक्स डी एक्स दस अपॉन दस थ्री कम्स आउटसाइड दस अपॉन दस माइनस थ्री साइन एक्स प्लस फोर कॉस एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री कॉस एक्स प्लस फोर साइन एक्स Now here they both will get cancelled, so it becomes integral of one. It becomes this one integral of one is x three into denominator is derivative is numerator, so log of denominator three cos x plus four sin x plus c. This becomes your final answer. So every time when you apply this type of method, when you are splitting the numerator as a into numerator plus b into derivative of a into denominator plus b into derivative of denominator. The first part will give you x, second part will give you log of denominator. So you can easily come to know a into x plus b into log of denominator is always your answer. Let's try one more problem. Integral four e raised to x minus twenty five divided by two e raised to x minus five. You can have any number over here. Doesn't matter. What you need to do? Split the numerator into two parts. Four e raised to x minus twenty-five is equal to a into what does the numerator should be split as? A into denominator plus b into derivative of denominator. So denominator is two e raised to x minus five plus b into derivative of denominator is two e raised to x. So split it. The numerator as two parts. The denominator plus the derivative of the denominator. Now balance the equation here. First, we'll take the constant term. So if you open the bracket, you get two a, two b into e raised to x, and you'll get a five a. So coefficient of e raised to x two a, coefficient of x two b combined together. Now when you equate constant with constant, minus five a is equal to minus twenty five, which implies a is equal to five. When you equate coefficient of e raised to x, two a plus two b is equal to four. Two into five plus two b is equal to four. Two b is minus six and b is minus three. So a became five and b became minus three. Now let's see what is the integral. So I denote this by i. I don't want to repeat the question again. Instead of this term. Instead of this term, I'll write a. A is how much? Five. Five into two e raised to x minus five plus b. B is minus three. So minus three into two e raised to x divided by two e raised to x minus five. You can notice that if I open the bracket, ten minus six will give me four. Minus twenty-five is perfectly. So this numerator and this numerator are same. Only thing I split it in such a way that I can integrate. So when you separate it, this upon this will give me five integral one dx. This upon this will give me minus three integral two e raised to x divided by two e raised to x minus five dx. So your answer became five x minus three log of two e raised to x minus five plus, and that is my final answer. This is how. You can integrate these two types of question. You need to remember that only these two problems can be done by this method. All functions cannot be expressed as numerator as a into denominator plus b into derivative of denominator. This possibility is not with all function. Only these two kinds of function only you can do this method. Now we come to the similar type question. Let's have a look at this. One upon one minus tan x dx. Now, if we convert this into sine and cos, it becomes a previous problem. I will write it over here. So, one upon one minus sine x upon cos x dx. When you take the LCM, cos x will become numerator, and cos x minus sine x becomes the denominator. Cos x became LCM, and the LCM into numerator. Now, I can easily split them. Now I don't require a and b to do it. Just we can look at this. Cos x can be written as. Remember what was our type of problem? A sine x plus b cos x plus c sine x plus d cos x. 
only difference between this and this is this a happen to become zero. If a becomes zero, b become one, c become d become one, c become minus one, you'll come to the same. So it is the same category problem. So it doesn't matter to us. So cos x can be written as first denominator cos x minus sin x. Then derivative of denominator, derivative of cos x minus sin x, derivative of minus sin x minus cos x. So do not change that, don't take the minus common because we want the derivative to be present. We need to only just balance the equation. You can see that you can mentally balance this equation. Cos x, if you, I don't want sin x to be present here, this is minus sin x, this is minus sin x. If I put a one more minus here, the sin x will get cancelled. But I am getting two cos x. So one option is divide and multiply with two. You can do that. So let me do it that in the next step. So I can write this, so I can write here as two cos x. So this is one shortcut. Otherwise you'll have to write a and b and solve the equation. It doesn't matter. Anyhow, you just find. So divide by 2, 2 cos x divided by cos x minus sin x. So that became 1 by 2 integral cos x minus sin x minus of minus sin x minus cos x divided by cos x minus sin x dx. Remember this 1 by 2 is common for the whole answer. So 1 by 2 whole answer. When you separate integral 1 dx, this became minus sin x minus cos x divided by cos x plus minus sin x. If you take off the minus common, then derivative will not match. Then the denominator's derivative will not be numerator. So this minus need be kept as minus only. So do not take minus common and cancel it out. Then derivative will not match. Derivative of cos x will be minus x, then minus sin x minus cos. So your answer became half into integral of 1 is x minus log of modulus cos x minus sin x plus c. This became your final answer. This is how we could have, we can do the problem. So if you have tan x here or you have some number 2 plus 3 tan x here, change them into sin and cos. Denominator sin and cos, numerator should be sin and cos or even one of them will do, but we cannot have single term. This method cannot be applied if it is one upon. This problem you cannot apply. We have already learned different method to do that. It numerator need to have a sign or a cos or both. Then only this problem can be done.